hello good evening everyone welcome to my subscriber lessons it's saturday night here on local time is 7 55 pm which is the uk time or gmt Darius. once again i'm with my couple of students you know that i don't have many students but whatever i have i'm happy at the moment so i believe that everyone is doing fantastic because it is midnight in many asian countries but it is evening in the uh, european or the same time zone countries and it's afternoon or you know uh, daytime in most of the north and south american countries as well as canada early morning in australia new zealand you know far eastern countries japan indonesia malaysia and those countries once again dear viewers you are watching the live stream and uh, today our topic is english practice so what do you learn from this kind of lesson that's the very you know, big question very often learners ask you know when i make the public live stream there are a few things you can always learn from my lives number one grammar number two speaking techniques number three vocabs number four if you're an ielts candidate possibly it's better for you to know all the rubrics techniques strategies how you can get good score in reading writing speaking and listening as well and lastly which i did my recent course in phonetics the basic british ipa how your sounds could be better how you can develop your english pronunciation to a standard level remember that it is important for you to sound you know clearly correctly so that your learners your listeners your audience can understand it correctly okay and which is why you know very often uh, many students come to my live stream and they ask oh teacher can you please pronounce this word can you please pronounce that word why it is sounded like this why it isn't okay so one second dear viewers um here and as you might be aware it's a subscriber lesson uh, being a non-subscriber, you are only able to watch it silently. You are not able to make any comments. But Hello has an offer. You know, if you have one dollar in your account, Hello Wallet, possibly you can subscribe to any of the teachers you like. Only one teacher for two weeks freely. And also, Hello has uh, given an announcement that from Monday there would be a competition. If you are interested, you can participate in the competition all right so these are the some basic information before we kick off our lessons or classes okay let me share our today's lesson plan okay so we're going to learn to the formal and informal greetings and why it is important to know the formal and informal words guys greetings are the part of our communication so and why you have to focus being a non-native speaker uh, formal and informal english that's really sometimes a challenging question you know and we must understand that english language is an amazing language which is not only a language it teaches us etiquettes manners and also it teaches us politeness you see if you don't learn anything from the english being a polite or being an etiquette person or manners then really uh, need to understand it's not only a language if you think that it's a language that's fine but if you don't think that you can't learn a politeness or etiquette manner that's really should be shocking as well because there are hundreds and i should say thousands of words that will help you understand how we can be polite while you're talking or while you're writing all right so 
we are going to first discuss today formal and informal English and after that some you know real life examples I'll be back in a moment guys Okay, so I'm back. So before we start this, it is important for all of us to understand formal and informal English. Uh, we have already started our lesson, okay, so it is 58 minutes, it's counting down. Um, so what is a, f what do you mean by the word formal English? Uh, so formal English is the type of language w where and which is used by educated people Okay, uh, one moment, I need to log on to my mobile as well. Hello? Hello? Okay, it sound is all right. So formal English, once again, formal English is the type of language which is used by educated people on certain special occasions like academic purpose, technical reports, scholarly writing, research paper, presentation. Okay, it is also part of official journals, official publications, as well as regulations and business letters, business English. And whereas informal English, we call sometimes colloquial English, is the everyday language of the same group of people uh, but mostly used by ordinary conversation, personal information, letters, private interactions, advertisements and sometimes some newspapers and broadcasting people also use informal English but there's a limit though okay remember that some informal expressions or some informal words are so much limited you're not allowed to use beyond your family members, beyond your close friends, uh, I should say informal environment. So the most accepted informal environments are like, you know, uh, your family members, family matters, your relatives, your close friends, okay, and also similar kind of uh, situations where you have the trend to speak, you know, easily with normal English. So that's the two basic differences, you know. So, um, dear viewers, you might be aware that I have shared this live stream through my Facebook Live as well as my YouTube Live channel. So some people are from there. Welcome guys who have joined from the Facebook Live as well as the YouTube channel. Okay, it looks like my students are still busy, possibly. Because of the Christmas holidays, you know, um, many of my students are busy at the moment. They just informed me earlier that they're not able to join the lessons maybe next couple of weeks. 
However, dear viewers and dear students, seniors and learners, remember that because this live stream is recorded and you can watch it anytime. So we'll go through the mini conversation. Remember, uh, introduction, small talk, formal greetings. So it's a greeting between two persons, okay, and two people. You can say also persons is also correct. James, good morning, Professor Austin. How are you doing? Professor Austin, good morning, James. I'm doing well. And you? Uh, I'm great, thank you. This is my friend Emma. She's thinking about applying to this college. She has a few questions. Would you mind telling us about the process, please? Professor Austin, hello, Emma. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm more than happy to speak with you. Please stop by my office next week. Emma, it's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Thank you so much for helping us. Uh, Professor Austin, don't mention it. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer your questions. Look, this is a very short, mini conversation uh, between um, Professor and James and Emma. Okay, and we will analyze and we'll discuss when we should use good morning, when we should use you know, uh, some grammar pattern, like would you mind telling, this is good pattern. And also, uh, if you remember that think is a static verb, but generally the grammar rule is we don't need to use ing with the static verb. She's thinking about applying, about applying to this college. Okay, and also we're going to explain some of the sounds. Remember that it's very important to sound uh, correctly and naturally and which is why we should know the basic pronunciation techniques how you can pronounce what very amazing way so good morning is a general greeting formal greeting when we see someone in the western culture good morning good afternoon or good evening but we don't say good night you know if you say good night means you're saying goodbye so you've got to be careful saying good night to any person, even if it is at night. You can say good night at night when you have finished the conversation and would like to go. I would like to say goodbye in a, in a different way. So good night, guys. See you later. That means goodbye for the time being. And maybe we'll meet again. So this is the amazing part. And also, if you have noticed or not, how are you doing is a very good question pattern and in conversation and even if you're planning to sit for the IELTS exam or TOEFL or any other certificate exam remember this question pattern is very important how are you doing look after various ing so if somebody says like that you need to answer with the similar with perfect and i'm doing well i'm all right it's also correct but i'm doing l is the most perfect answer i'm doing great i'm doing fantastic etc okay so then you see james has said i'm great thank you remember that thank you sorry excuse me please are the some of the magic words which we can use anytime any place uh, why did these words are called magic words in the united kingdom when children go to kindergarten primary school i should say they're taught these words to always use it correctly, which is why, you know, the, most of the children in the English speaking countries, they learn this four words always, excuse me, sorry, thank you, please, you know, and teachers practically teach them how to use it correctly. Like, excuse me, teacher, may I go to the toilet? Yes, thank you. See, this is the way they talk, the children talk to the teacher. And that is amazing, you know, how they learn and develop their speaking. I remember that guy very often also people ask me, hey, how I can develop speaking like you? Remember guys, once again, don't say speaking like me, make a big dream better than me. Because English is not my first language, it's my second language. And I'm not native either, okay? So make your dream high, practice it. So that's the way you can always learn and move forward. So next sentence says, this is my friend, Emma. All right, now 
James is introducing his friend Emma. Hey, driver, now welcome. Hello, hello, teacher Rahab. Hello, driver, now how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing uh, excellent. Can I say so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. you. What, what about, about you? you? I'm fantastic, as usual. Yeah. yeah. Glad, Glad to hear, hear that. Yeah, I can hear some buzzing sound from your connection. Uh, can, can you, you hear, hear my, my echo, echo, echo or not, what? Not the echo, but some sound like zzz, buzzing sound. Oh, oh I, I don't know. know. Uh, should I? No, that, don't worry about that. M M mute and unmute. Possibly it may work. Yeah, try it once. Oh. Uh. Uh. Uh, what about now? Oh, it's gone. Thank you very much. That's really quick oh. and cool. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So t tell me, please, driver. How is your Christmas shopping going on? Uh, Christmas shopping. Uh, shopping. I don't know. The, today I d didn't uh, make any uh, any walking for shopping. <laughs> I would say, just uh, as usual, an ordinary day. It's an ordinary day of your life, and you didn't go for shopping yet. So, who does the majority shopping? Is it your wife or you? Uh, sometimes uh, I go to to shopping. To uh, how to say? I go for shopping. I go for shopping. I go shopping. I go for shopping. Both are correct. Okay. Sometimes I go shopping, but uh, today my wife. Went, went uh, shopping, shopping with, with my, my son. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So I'm free, free today. today. Mm -hmm. Have you had a dinner? <laughs> uh, uh, not yeah. yet. Uh, oh, it's 10 o'clock in your country. I, I, I haven't, haven't. I haven't yet. yet. You haven't had yet. Okay, that's great. I yeah. haven't yeah. had. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's not, not too late. late. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my time goes ahead of yours two hours uh, but uh, it's not too late for me all right i'm go i'm going to do something on my computer this night mm -hmm. okay uh, after the lesson are you going to be awake i need to call you yeah. to talk about something privately okay, okay. Oh, that's great sure that's great so, driver, I'm sure you know that very often you use formal and informal words. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from your concept of understanding, can you please tell me well, which words should be formal and which words should be informal? Um, when I'm in a formal or on formal meeting, like a teacher's meeting, um, for example, uh, for example, I am working uh, at school, and uh, sometimes we had we have a teachers meeting with our boss, with our boss, and uh, it's always uh, serious. We use uh, formal language. Can you please give an example? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, not in your language, but obviously in English. Uh, yeah, that's a question. I don't know how to say it uh, in English. It's not, nothing special. Uh, just talking, uh, we, are, uh, we are talking about our plans, about uh, our achievements. What is good, what is bad. But it's... Uh, Mm. Mm. It's formal in environment. Can I say so? Mm -hmm. Environment. Sure. Yeah. 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 But uh, 
Uh, I need to do, to speak uh, formally when I'm talking uh, to my children's, uh, my students' uh, parents first time, especially. Later, it's if everything is going smoothly, uh -huh. we can talk uh, less formal. That's right. Great. Good example. Yeah. So let me briefly explain to you, then we can have this formal and informal greetings, and we'll explain from there. Okay. So formal English or formal expressions are those with, uh, which are mostly used by you know an formal environment as I have explained. So what are the formal environments like your office, maybe your workplace, maybe in a hospital, maybe you have visit you have gone to somewhere else and that could be a formal environment okay And also yeah. some people said that educated people always use formal, especially in academic expressions like academic writing, research paper your presentation maybe your a uh, live broadcast as a president or of a high official and also maybe technical uses or scholarly scholarly items scholarly written items scholarly means that is uh, related to their academic publications and also mm. official reports of maybe regulations maybe business letters business english must we must use formal english in those cases but with the same people who are using those languages, they can also use informal in language in informal environment. Okay, and let me give you a good yeah. example. Hey, what's up, dude? For example, he said very <laughs> informal. Yeah. And yeah. also sometimes they use an everyday language, group of people or ordinary conversation, personal information, private interactions, you know, advertisements. Sometimes people use informal English, even in the popular newspapers sometimes I've seen them using informal English and broadcasting as well uh, because up to a certain point or limit uh, you can accept the for informal expressions okay yeah. so today's topic and uh, there are quite a few conversation I have compiled it from one of the educational learning source and I thought maybe we can start from that that's really amazing can you see the screen clearly driver yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, before you start you know, reading this part, I've got a question for you. Yes, please. I think you yesterday said that you're going to have a holiday, right? When are you planning to go to holiday? Mm, uh, we, we haven't uh, decided yet. Maybe I don't have any plans. We will see. Okay, so you mean to say if you uh, if you mean uh, something like we will have a vacation, that's right, Ho holidays, yeah, holidays, uh, vacation, Christmas holiday, Christmas holidays, and New Year holidays. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have highlighted one important matter: holiday. In British English, in American I know, English, I know, teacher of heart, but how can I figure out between these two Englishes? <laughs> so, if you, if you cannot figure out, always ask. Do you mean vacation? I'm going away somewhere. Um, Remember that by asking a question, you can always get the answer. Yeah, but it's... Uh, uh, you know, I uh, I'm taking classes with the teacher uh, Johnny. Yes, she is American, mm -hmm. and <laughs> she teach me American. She teaches me, she teaches me American. But uh, the, I think you understand uh, how to be a student here on Hello. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two. Uh, we have. We must learn two. Um, two Englishes. <laughs> but ultimately, you will be able to know because you are taking lessons from Teacher Johnny. And yeah. Definitely, she's a Native American teacher, and I guess she'll teach you American English. 
whereas yeah. being a non-native teacher i'll try to give you the comparison of both so that you understand what you're learning yeah okay that's really cool so it means that you haven't decided yet whether you're going out somewhere or not all right maybe i will be i'll be at home but uh, if we will decide to travel a little bit it's it will be for so for a short time maybe a couple of days do you have anything on your mind maybe i have friends okay yeah so there is another question before we uh, start reading because these paragraphs are so small we can analyze and we can learn and discuss a lot of things after that um in your country when you celebrate the christmas holiday what is the typical christmas dinner uh, we have we have some uh, traditional dishes uh, but uh, First of all, I uh, I have to say, in my country, most of the people are Orthodox Christians, mm -hmm. and uh, their Christmas is after New Year. Mm -hmm. uh, se uh, seven, seventh of January. Okay. But I am a Roman Co uh, Catholic, and. Uh, uh, my Christmas will be earlier. Mm -hmm. So you mean on the time? My celebration will be earlier. You mean on the 25th yeah. of December? Yeah. Okay. Next, Next week. week. Yeah. Uh, Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah. All right. So, as I'm saying, what kind, what is the typical Christmas dinner? What do you have to eat? <laughs> Gerard, you know it's not my topic about food. Just you can tell us the names like turkey, vegetables, roasted potato, pudding, these, that. Maybe everything. Many, uh, many dishes uh, with meat, to be honest, and vegetables. 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 Yeah. Vegetables vegetables very good high five for you everyone vegetables N not veggie veg doubles veg veg okay vegetables vegetables very good is it better it's better than before better than before it's better <laughs> yeah it's better okay i don't know how can i figure out what uh, how can i pronounce pronounce <laughs> because it's uh, uh i think uh, i don't uh, i don't want uh, i'm not going to uh, um, uh, to speak like a native speaker because i don't know uh, which one i should choose <laughs> I got your point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. So there is a dialogue between James okay. and Professor Austin. You will read once. You'll be James. I'll be Professor Austin. And second time, I'll be James, and you'll be Professor Austin. Okay. Uh, is that uh, screen is clear and understandable? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to switch off my camera. It would be better. I can. Uh, okay, that's fine. Take my phone. Oh, yeah. hang on a moment, please, Professor Brahim is here. Yeah. Welcome, Professor Brahim. We are happy to see you. Hi, teacher Hatali. Hi, Dravenir. Hi, all viewers. I am very happy to attend this live stream to practice my English, to share with you my thought, my idea, my learning process i learn from all viewers from teacher rahat ali and from driver i have to learn one day how to play the guitar sure <laughs> okay. we both will teach yeah. you how to play the guitar uh, yeah. <laughs> yes okay professor brahim you are on the you know peak of the time i should say 
on the nick of the time that we are going to start a conversation. You would be James. No, no, no. Driver now would be James. And you would be Professor Austin. Okay, when the conversation would be finished, then you would be James and driver would be Professor Austin. Okay. But I can call, I can say, good morning, Professor Brahim. How are you doing? Yes, you can <laughs> say that. That will be amazing. Yeah. And Professor Brahim can say that, good morning, Dravana. I'm doing well. And you? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we are going to analyze the sentence, though the sentence seems to be very easy peasy, but there are some impacts <laughs> and there are some structures yeah. as well through which we can learn hundreds of similar sentences okay yes. so let's okay. let's move on okay good morning professor brahim how are you doing good morning driver i am doing well and you i'm great thank you this is my friend emma she is thinking about applying to this college she has a few questions would you mind telling us about the process, please? Hello, Ina. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Emma. Emma. Hello, Emma. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am more than happy to speak with you. Please talk by my office next week. So you have to be Professor, uh, you have to be Emma as well, driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Thank you so much for helping us. Don't mention it. Hopefully, I will be able to answer your question. Very good. Now, that is the mini conversation, okay? Yeah. Oh, hang on a second. All right. Now, uh, now Professor Brahim will be James, and okay. he'll be Professor Drivena. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Professor James versus Professor Drivena. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good morning, Professor Drivena. How are you doing? Good morning, Brahim. I'm doing well. And you? I'm great. Thank you. This is my friend, Anna. She is thinking about applying to this college. She has a few questions. Would you mind telling us about the process, please? Uh, hello, Emma. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm more than happy to speak with you. Please stop by my office next week. Yeah, you'll be Emma as well. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor Drivener. Thank you so much for helping us. Oh, don't mention it. Hopefully, I will be able to answer your, your questions. Very good. Well done. Bravo to both of you. High five. High five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, hang on a second. My mobile got frozen. One moment, guys. So, Professor Ibrahim, mm -hmm. let me have a chat one minute in the meantime. How was your day? Uh, it's busy. Unfortunately, I try to read in the morning for myself. Mm -hmm. Afternoon, I uh, for lunch, I went with my family to a restaurant where I eat and I have to come back at 19 because I have a meeting with my PhD students. Uh, we, we have a good habit each uh, Saturday. We meet all because we have uh, mm -hmm. five uh, PhD students with my colleagues, uh, three professors. We, we, uh, I'll doubt that we are not in the same place. We try to meet by a Google Meet. Uh, virtually and we discuss a problem how the work it was how it uh, if there is some problems we try to to the, to, to talk about it after that uh, I have to I have to to come to uh, to the class of English practice with teacher Hatali but my my daughter tell me that I have to work with with uh, with she for a little and that's why I am late and I apologize for that. That's okay, Professor Rahim. You don't have to apologize. I have to uh, uh, work with her, not she. With her, yes. Yeah. Remember that that is a very natural way of saying. That's great. At least you're here. That's fine. Uh, before you came, I just explained briefly in a formal and informal English. 
and you know driver was there so if you have a time maybe you can watch this video at the beginning one more time when you finish the lesson okay so yeah. thank you very much for both of you for participation of this conversation look, look at this good morning professor Austin. how are you doing this is a very formal way to greet anyone else you know we say good morning good afternoon good evening good and do you say good night when you're greeting professor Rahim? No, when you would, when you want to to leave, you say good night. Okay, and how about you, driver? Now, uh, if we meet someone uh, in the evening, yeah, in, in, at, if you meet someone at night, how do you greet the person? Uh, like hello. <laughs> okay, do you say good evening? Good. Uh, maybe sometimes. Uh, we say good evening i i think until 11. okay so after 11 what do you say hello just hello you don't say good evening if, if we, no no it's not evening anymore <laughs> all right it's night okay that's great okay another important thing is that you can see the how are you doing uh, I'm going to write yeah. it, you know. If you ever find the natural lips pronouncing, if you ever find any any word having ing, generally we do not pronounce the g, we pronounce only in, yeah. Yeah. That's very natural. Like this one. How are you doing? You see, not doing. How are you doing? Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Look, I'm doing well when the uh, professor Austin's answering. And also look at the question pattern. How are you doing? Okay. How are you? Yeah. How are you? How are you doing? So I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Look at the answer. The you know, professor didn't answer like this. I'm well. I'm doing well, you can say. I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing excellent, like Drivener said at the beginning. Uh, generally, we don't say I'm doing excellent. I'm excellent. You can say like this. Okay, driver. That okay. sounds more natural. Okay. Yeah. Why we are answering I'm doing well? Now, very often, many of my students ask this. I'm doing well. See, the question pattern is verb with ing, right? And we are just following yeah. the. We call it flow. Go with the flow. The flow of the conversation pattern. I'm doing well. I'm doing fine. Yeah. So when the question is yeah. the similar type, do not say I'm okay. Answer that I'm doing well or I'm doing this. Is it clear to pattern? Yeah. pattern. Yeah, with, with, with ING, I'm doing well, whatever. So now I want you both of you to make two similar kinds of sentences. Professor Brahim is going to ask Drivena, Drivena is going to answer it, and vice versa. Then you are going to ask him. Okay. The same question? Similar pattern, not the same question. Okay. How is your day, uh, Professor Drivener? <laughs> uh, my day is uh, as usual. How is my day? My day is. Uh, <laughs> my day is doing well <laughs> yeah professor brahim i was trying to say you know you have to use bar with ing so how is your day going on you can say if it's okay. still going or how was your day went huh? okay but if you want to say bar with ing how is your day going on or simply going is also fine how is your day going on professor brahim or uh, professor drivena <laughs> We all are professors here. <laughs> yes, by virtue of your dignity and you know respect. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How is your day going on? Very good. Yeah. Uh, my day, every everything is going smoothly. Very good. My answer. day is going smoothly. Very yeah. good. I, I was trying to listen the G sound, whether you pronounce it or not. How is the day going on? Professor Brahim and Drivena both have, you know, practiced well. Remember, ing, you know, we call that in a natural way of speaking, we do not pronounce g at all. Okay, 
And another yeah. thing possibly I forgot to tell you, maybe last week I should have said to you. If you ever find this word and like so and. <laughs> yeah, salt and pepper, yeah. And always become N, yeah. Yes, I get yeah. it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, remember that. This is another natural way of speaking. We don't say salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Okay. I'm going to write a few words so that you can practice. Eh? Like next one is. Yeah. I will come back for one minute. No problem, Professor Brahim. Okay. Okay. Black and blue. Black and white. Yeah, black and blue as well. <laughs> <laughs> black and blue. Okay. It's uh, for me. It's uh, understandable uh, because of rock and roll. Yeah. Nobody, nobody says rock and roll. Exactly. Rock and roll. Nobody says so. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. Hot and hot and spicy. Yeah. Hot and spicy. Okay. That food. Oh my God. That food is hot and spicy. What I'm trying to say, they can use in a sentence so that uh, it becomes more amazing to you like i like rock and roll do you like rock and roll driver yeah, yeah i do. do i do like rock and roll do you like hot and spicy food uh, yeah uh, i like hot and spicy food really okay yeah but i sometimes not always okay and do you like to have a black and blue relation with your friend Black and blue means no, black and blue means no. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. You don't. Okay, and salt and pepper. Do you like salt and pepper in your fish and chips? Mm. Fish and chips. <laughs> chips, fish and chips. Yeah. yeah. Do you like salt and pepper? Look, they like salt and pepper in your fish and chips. Two words you have just both have got and <laughs> yeah. And okay. fish and chips, yeah. Oops. Fish and chips. Yeah. Remember that we call chips in the UK is what you call fries. Okay. Uh, in my country, we have uh, chips and snacks. Chips and snacks. And we say chips. Okay. Is it like a French potato fries? Yeah. It can be. Not only f uh, from potato, but uh, we say chips. So we don't say fries. You don't say fries. Okay. But fries is mostly yeah. spoken by North American people, whereas in England and the UK, we call it uh, chips. Okay. That's why mm. we fish and chips is the uh, you know traditional English food. Fish and chips. I am back. Welcome back, Professor yeah. Brahim. We are happy Welcome. to get you back. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Professor Brahim, next rule is that, as you know, N should be sound N, and there are some words. Maybe you can use in a sentence these words. Can I read that, or I have to make a sentence? Read and make a sentence, please, so that it is helpful for you and for us. And also, driver is going to ask you a question. Remember that after that. Okay. The first salt and pepper, in, when I deal with image processing, we add some noise known as salt and pepper. Really? I didn't know that. Thank you very much for sharing. <laughs> okay. Next one. Fish, fish and chips. Fish and, fish and chips. chips. Do you know what is chips, Professor Brahim? Yes, it's fried. French fries, yeah. yeah. Do you call fries in your country or chips? Or pot uh, potato in our, fries? In our country, Morocco, I say frit. Frit? Frit, yes. Oh, is, is it Arabic term, frit? No, it's from France. It's French. Oh, it's French. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. You see, I learned a lot of things from you guys. You're my teachers <laughs> too in that perspective. Honestly, we all learn from... We all are professors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today, we all are professors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that is. Please read it one more time so that we can finish this today's this tiny conversation, and we are going to ex explain some more group patterns, which is amazing. Black and white. Mm -hmm. Black and white. There are uh, there are uh, in general three type of image. Black and white color image and 
ground level image. Wow. Next one. Black and blue. Black and blue. Black and black and blue. Mm -hmm. Then hot, uh, hot and spicy. Do you like hot and spicy food, Professor Ibrahim? Yes, it makes appetite when it is very hot and spicy. Wow. And Drivana doesn't like rock and roll music. Do you like it? No, <laughs> either. Oh, as a guitarist, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I do like rock and roll. I like rock and roll very much. Yeah. <laughs> rock and roll, yeah. Very good. Well done, both of you. Now, look at this next sentence. Um, if you remember, static verb, like the verb that is related to our human state, like think, feel, look, understand, love, some common words. See, we do not use verb with ing, but here you can see there is th yeah. thinking. Remember, two static verbs we can always use ing, and one of them is this one, thinking. Another one is feeling, yeah? Thinking yeah. and feeling. Like, I'm not feeling well today, for example. Oh, not feeling, I'm sorry, feeling. Double, double, yeah. So feeling, yeah? Thinking. Uh, this TH sound is unvoiced. Remember, teacher Johnny on the shoulders, Professor Ibrahim yeah. and Drivana. Thinking that your tongue must touch your tooth when you're thinking. Thinking. thinking thinking very good bravo yeah. successful in one go i'm driving our nose already because the teacher johnny already had taught him <laughs> yeah so thinking 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 very good thinking, thinking. also thank yeah. you from the same place thank you thesis but not though though is from our you know un voice sound it comes from the vocal cord yeah Okay, so thinking and feeling are two steady verbs we can use with ing. Like, oh, I'm thinking to move uh, to Japan, for example. I'm not feeling well today. I can't go to the office. Okay, so both of you make two sentences one with thinking, one with feeling. Professor Ibrahim and then driver now. I am thinking about what to do tomorrow. Maybe. But... Hmm? Go on. But it is it's a strange feeling. Now it's as a as a no no. It's a strange feeling when I realize that it's not very easy to uh, to wake up early on Sunday. All right, don't worry. Driver is going to call you in the morning, Professor Brian. Wake <laughs> yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Driver, I see your turn, please. Okay, uh, I'm thinking of buying about buying a new mobile phone. Wow, congratulations for that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just thinking. I'm not feeling good about this. Come on, money is not a problem. Uh, I'm problem. not feeling good about uh, uh, those prices. I say, money is not a problem <laughs> for yeah. you, is it? Yeah, to be honest, I, I've already bought a new mobile phone. <laughs> okay. And I'm using... I'm using it right now, and I'm really happy. <laughs> Very good. I f I'm feeling well. You're feeling well, feeling happy, you can say that, yeah. rather than well. I'm feeling happy. Well is related to their feeling you know, worse to bad or bad to better. Uh, if you say, I'm feeling well, means you are sick, now you're better, OK? But if you're happy, you can <laughs> yeah. say, I'm feeling happy, or I'm happy, simply. OK. I'm happy that I'm, I'm happy good. about this. Or, very good. Now, next sentence, look at this. She has a few questions. Uh, remember, Professor Brahim and Raven, a few is always plural number when we can count it. We call it countable uh, words. A few, many, a, okay, a lot or lots of, okay. But a few is, is very, uh, not many, but very, maybe you can count it. So she has a few questions. This is the pattern. Now we can make more sentences like, like I have a few questions for, uh, you know, the, how you can watch our live stream later, for example. Or I have a few things to do tomorrow, as Professor Brahim said. Yeah, uh, Driver yeah. said, I have a few things to <laughs> do in my shopping list. 
for tomorrow, for example. Yeah. So make one sentence each, please. A few. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> that was just an example. I know that. We are just trying to make the conversation interesting. Yeah. Professor yeah. Professor Brahim, are you still there? Yes, I am still here. I am still there. But for my example, I have to repeat what uh, Professor Dreviner said uh, <laughs> moments, uh, moments ago. If Professor Dreviner, can you please explain? Uh, uh, what uh, that what should I explain the words that are we, <laughs> we you are going to use in a sentence a few a few yeah uh, uh, should I repeat my question yes so professor yes yeah and also please explain uh, him which words we are using as a uh, learning purpose here a few I've just blocked it professor Brahim can you see the blocked word in the screen yes a few yeah a few uh, if, okay uh, i'm going to ask you a few questions about about uh, about this lesson okay go ahead first uh, okay first one is uh, how do you understand uh, this expression a few questions very good when i'm happy with the question pattern <laughs> it's amazing yeah <laughs> every spend of you means uh, one or two or more uh it is yeah it oh is. thank you <laughs> thank you for your explanation uh, but uh, for me it's easier i always say uh, i would say uh, i have a couple of questions a couple Okay, now there is a difference between a couple and a few, okay? A few is yeah. not one or two, it could be more, maybe four or five. A couple is mostly related to two, you know, as a couple. Couple means two persons. Yeah. Yeah, so. Ah, that's right. Okay, so it is your way of talking, that's fine. Even sometimes I have heard people saying a couple of questions, though the questions are three or four questions, okay? <laughs> <laughs> a few questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay. So, Professor Brahim, what Drivener is demonstrating is that we have to use the word a few to make sentences, an interesting sentence, okay? Yes. Now I understand that couple is just two. Just two. And a few it, is more than one. More than one, yeah. It could be two, it could be three. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Clear? Yeah. yeah. Very good. So I have I have ten questions. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 Question I number that. one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, if it is uh, mentioned 10 questions, then you have to go with question number one. What's your name? Yeah. Question number two. Go on like this. Okay, next pattern. Yeah. Look, would you mind? Would you mind is a very polite expression and request. And I'm sure you have noticed that would you mind telling? After, if you ever use would you mind after that you must use verb with ing no preposition i've seen people say would you mind to tell us no that's wrong that doesn't sound natural would you mind telling similarly you replace the word with any other word would you mind asking would you mind closing would you mind going would you mind coming would you mind repeating the question please very good would you mind repeating the yeah. question very good see would Oops, you mind okay okay this, look at this pattern uh drive in a Professor Brahim already yeah. given the examples. Yeah. Uh, 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 teacher Rahat, uh, I would like to share one um, mm -hmm. one expression I've heard once. Sure. It's it's uh, it was uh, really surprising for me. It's like very polite. Mm -hmm. Would you be so kind to read this article? Very good. Yeah. That's really an academic expression, honestly. Yeah. Uh, would you be so kind to tell me what are you going to teach us next lesson? Mm -hmm. And also, driver, I like to add this. Would you mind be kind to read it, as you said? That's very good. Yeah. Thank you very much, the person who taught you. You can always use that yeah. one. 
Okay, mm. that's great. So we both are clear. Now, next one. It's a pleasure to meet you. Look at this. It's very often oh. we use it. This is very formal expression. So it's a pleasure. It's mm. my pleasure. How there are different ways you can say it. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Or the pleasure is mine. Okay. Yes. It's my mm. pleasure, or it's a pleasure, the, or the pleasure is mine. If you want to use pleasure only. Yeah. Okay, use this pattern, please. Uh, Professor Brahim first, then Drivana. It's my pleasure to meet you, Professor Drivana. Thank you. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure, it's mine too, to meet you here. Very good. Today. Bravo. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Teacher Rohat, uh, I have a question. Uh, is it correct? Uh, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I met a couple of a couple of times uh, when uh, people say uh, something like uh, some of my students, uh, some of my students, but uh, they say some students of mine. Both are correct. <laughs> yeah. So mine okay. is a positive form. Some of my students, like it is my book or the book is mine. Both are correct. You know, both yeah. have got similar meaning. Like it's my book, for example, Driven and Professor Rahim. Like it's it's my mouse, yeah. Can you see? <laughs> the mouse is yeah. the mouse is mine. You can say in the both ways. So that's okay, but but uh, how to build uh, a correct sentence? Uh, for example, some students of mine mm -hmm. are not so successful. Great. Right now. Good examples. Or some of my students are not successful. I'm just helping the Some of my students are not successful. Very good. Similar patterns. I mean, two patterns, but similar meaning, I mean to say. All right. Teacher mm Hatali. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Dravener, I have to say one word about success or failure of students. Sure. We say that. Either we success or we learn, we never talk about failure. How do you think about that? Uh, never talk about failure. Yeah, that's very, you know, in a motivating sentence. But honestly, Professor Brahim and Drivana, if somebody has not failed, the person is never going to understand the, you know, happiness of being successful. Okay. Yeah. And honestly speaking, I failed many times in my life. And when after that, I never gave up. Giving up was the, my failure. It could be. I strict on my plans. Oh, I failed. It doesn't matter. I took a lesson why I failed. Then when I found out, I just focused on those parts and I become successful. You see, this is how we should be always motivating and moving forward. Okay. Yeah. All right, next one. I'm more than happy. Look, this is one of the common expression you can use. I am more than happy to emphasis. Yes, I'm more than happy to emphasis. And Drivana, more than happy to? Yeah. I'm more than happy that you, uh, how to say, bring uh, in the past. Bring in the past. Brought. Brought. Oh, no, I, 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 I didn't get you. I'm sorry. I'm more than happy to bring the past matter. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I'm more than happy that you brought uh, this topic today. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. I understand. Yes, yeah. that's a good expression. Remember, while you're having conversation, you can use this elaborately whenever you feel like. That's great. Both of you are very amazing. Now, look at the stop by. It's very, you know, amazing phrasal verb stop by what do you mean by stop by like professors please stop by my my sorry please stop by my office next week i, I attended for many many times ago or listen for for a teacher from hello he said the same sentence thanks for passing for stopping by it means for attending or being here that's right but there is another meaning related to it i'm going to explain in a moment let me listen to drivena drivena uh, i think uh, um 
Professor means uh, please uh, come to my office next week. Yes, so it is, has got both meaning depending on the context. Remember, uh, stopping by means when you're going somewhere or some you're doing something that's come to my office to meet me. Okay, so I just stopped by to say hello to both of you. This is also correct. Or stop by my office next week with your exam paper. That means you have got other plans and you're also meeting that person. It has got both of the meaning. So both of you are correct. Yeah. All right, bravo and high five to you. Look, the time has gone quickly, only five minutes yeah. more. Oops. Okay, uh, <laughs> now look at this, uh, another word, don't mention it, you see? Yeah. Uh, do you think that is formal or informal expression? For me, it sounds uh, formal. Okay. For me, it's informal because we, uh, we only say it verbally. Okay, so what do you say instead of don't mention it? Never mind. No. Just never mind. Mm -hmm. Don't mention is another saying you're welcome. Okay. You're welcome, yeah. yeah okay. Welcome. And I am happy to do that, to do so. I'm too happy to do that. Also, you can say, look, never mind. Uh, these are the ways i'm just can you see that um, happy yeah. to help no mention no problem okay no need to thank me no need to thank me these are some ways or any time so oh, any anytime, anytime this, an, uh, this, this, sorry go on uh, i i wanted to say the shortest uh, this shortest version Anytime, that's right. And anytime, anytime, and yeah. anytime is an amazing expression when somebody says thank you. Uh, I at the beginning I say to this thing, you know, remember English language is not only language, it also teaches us etiquette, manners, and politeness. By this way, by using this type of expression, we always, you know, prove that yeah, we are not only learning English, we are also learning how to be polite, how to maintain the manners and etiquettes yeah that's great you know um do, do you have anything to share anything to say uh, I, I have one, uh, one one thing to share with I, I was in the past in holland in netherlands and when i ask people with my bad english uh, at, uh, i say at the end thank you they say to me you are welcome and i don't understand everywhere i went they say to me you are welcome uh, from that time, I I make a match in between thank you and you are welcome. That's right. When somebody's thanking you, you can say in a different way in response, you are welcome, number one, or simply welcome, or you're very welcome. Never mind. Happy to help. Don't mention. These are the some of the expression in response you can say. Uh, not at all. Sometimes you can say that. Not at all. That means it is nothing. I wish I could do something more. So you're welcome. Welcome. Never mind. Uh, you're most welcome as well. Some people, some Asian people in Asian countries, they use it. Okay, Professor Ibrahim? Yeah. Yes. Very good. So you know all of these greetings and uh, response. Remember that the more we practice, the more we'll be amazing. And I'll suggest both of you, Professor Ibrahim and Ravana, if you have time, read something every day to learn new vocab so that we can come and discuss here as well. So look, I have learned this word today. Let's make two sentences, you know? Yeah. All right. All right. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> the class will end in one minute. Forty-five and, seconds now. Forty-four. And before that, I say to all of you, thank you, teacher Hatali. Thank you, teacher Professor Draven. <laughs> uh, thank you, all of you. Were fifty. We have fifty viewers, and I shared with you uh, an amazing uh, moment. And uh, thank you for all. For that Certainly. thank you thank you professor brahim certainly uh, the only real professor is brahim here yes and we are just uh, pretending to be professor professor driving yeah. and professor me <laughs> <laughs> no you are professor Artichar, okay. Hattari, and professor driven thank you very much thank you. you take care and be safe okay okay Have a good take time. care